So you got three sleeping bags, a lantern, and a one burner stove, please. Welcome to this Prentice Hall video on service operations management. A hot topic in operations management over the past few decades is quality management. Quality is considered to be a primary competitive dimension in nearly all industries. As customers, we demand good quality. For manufactured items, this means that we want goods that work as they're supposed to and don't break down prematurely. If we don't like the quality of items made in our home country, we are likely to buy imported goods. This global competition has forced manufacturers in many industries to provide increasingly superior quality. This has been a great benefit to us as consumers, since many goods are available at the best quality they ever have been. Unfortunately, service quality is rarely seen on the same scale of excellence as manufacturing quality. Why do you suppose this is the case? Well, for one thing, I'm firmly convinced that it is more difficult to manage service quality than it is to manage goods quality. Why would I say that? We'll answer that question in this segment and explore various issues in service quality management. Oh, and a tent, please. Quality is a major issue for modern organizations. Major strides have been made over the last few decades in manufacturing quality. Manufacturers employ a variety of quality improvement and assurance techniques to provide good quality. Service quality continues to be a challenge in many industries, however. Why? First, it is difficult to define quality in many instances because it is customer specific. For example, students in the same class may have different perceptions of what makes for a high quality class. The second challenge is that it's difficult to measure quality. Service organizations often must rely on subjective customer attitude measurements to determine whether a quality experience has been delivered. For example, customers may be asked to complete comment cards about their experience. A third challenge is quality assurance. Since customers are involved in the delivery of a service, there could be tremendous variability in the final outcome. For example, some customers may require more interaction with employees than other customers. A fourth challenge is the organization's response to quality defects. In manufacturing, if a defect is identified, the decision centers on whether to scrap the item or rework it. In services, it's often a problem to scrap a defect if the customer is involved in the defect. For example, if you have a tooth filled and the filling somehow comes out, usually you don't pull the tooth. Instead, the issue is service recovery, meaning the organization needs to recover from a quality problem. In service recovery, the defect might be attributable solely to the customer. Not taking prescribed medicine or writing the wrong account number on a bank deposit slip are examples. Also, it can be a challenge to identify the extent of damage. Not only has the customer invested money, but there is also the investment of time. The customer's attitude may spill over into negative word of mouth. Let's take the example of service recovery at the Miami University Outdoor Pursuit Center. What do you think might be an appropriate recovery approach for a customer who rented a tent but returns it in damaged condition and demands his money back? He claims it was damaged when he rented it, but you wonder, what if the rental agreement requires customers to check the condition of rented equipment at the time of rental, even though this may not always be followed? One option might be to grant the refund, or the center could give the customer a free future rental. Still another option would be to cite the rental contract requiring customers to check equipment at the time of rental. That would imply no refund or compensation. Or perhaps something else could be done. What do you think? If the fitness center is concerned about monetary cost to the facility, managers could look at the cost of each option and choose the least costly outcome. If the fitness center is most concerned about customer goodwill, it will likely let the customer choose the remedy that suits them best. In most cases, the company should carefully consider the trade-off between monetary and goodwill costs. They should not ignore the broad ramifications of lost goodwill. Regardless of the decision made, the fitness center must make sure it has an adequate degree of consistency in its service recovery. If no consistency exists, customers may become upset if similar problems result in different recovery outcomes.